All right, so I'm going to take a look at this uh, video that was posted last night here off of the channel called Jason Goodman, and it features the very extremely well-known defense, criminal defense lawyer, Alan Dershowitz, who's a big-time insider player in this NWO, and I want to focus on what he says about forced vaccinations. You want to listen to this, of course, because, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's all on board. And, uh, yeah, we just want to take a look at what's being said here. So we'll listen in. That if I didn't leave, I could take it up with a judge, which I took to mean they would arrest me, throw me in a concrete box, and allow me to speak to a judge about the Constitution on Monday, since this was a Friday. Is Governor Andrew Cuomo allowed to shut down the Constitution because of allegations of a virus that certain medical professionals argue against? Let's be very clear how we break down this issue. The city of New York, the state of New York, has the power to close a park based on their view that it would be helpful in defeating the pandemic. Absolutely no question about that. The Supreme Court has case after case after case saying that public health justifies uh, closing down parks, closing down uh, public areas. The next question is, does the governor have the right to do that? Governors generally are not authorized to make the law. Uh, they're authorized to enforce the law. So you'd have to look to see if there were legislative authority allowing the governor to close the park. If there is, then it would be legitimate. Uh, let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread a disease, even if you disagree. You have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, can if I stop you? Did, did, yeah, the health justifies uh, close to see if there were legislative authority allowing the governor to close the park. If there is, then it would be legitimate. Uh, let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread a disease, even if you disagree. You have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, can I stop you? Did, did, yeah. No yeah, right not state. to be vaccinated? Then it would be legitimate. Uh, let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread a disease, even if you disagree. You have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, can I stop you? Did you have no rights is what he's saying. That's all. It's that simple, right? You have no rights. And the way that he flips it, of course, is by saying you have no constitutional right. You have no constitutional right not to be vaccinated. You have no constitutional right not to wear a mask. You have no constitutional right not to be quarantined and all these other things. Just amazing, eh? Again, he's considered to be one of America's top lawyers and is a major insider, uh, was a former defense attorney for, of course, Epstein, Tyson, and so many other famous people, Trump even. So you have no right, you have no constitutional right to stand up to any of this. <laughs> now, the question was put forth as, Governor Cuomo have the right to do this to this 20 million or so <clears throat> people that inhabit New York City. And of course, Cuomo, I've shown in my videos, came out and said that they don't. <laughs> he basically said it's entirely voluntary, this whole thing, and that the state does not have the power to enforce it, and that if everybody came out and went back to work and just went on with their business, there's nothing that they could do. And here you got Dershowitz saying the opposite, of course, saying that you have no constitutional rights. <laughs> he's basically saying <clears throat> that you have no constitutional rights, is what he's saying, in effect. Very interesting. Yeah. No yeah, right just, not hey. to be vaccinated, meaning if they decide you have to be Absolutely. vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated? Absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. 
if the vaccine Where is that in the Constitution? To prevent, if the vaccination is designed to prevent the spreading disease. If the vaccination is only to prevent a disease that you will get, for example, if there's a disease that will kill you, you have the right to refuse that, but you have no right to refuse to be vaccinated against a uh, contagious disease. Public health, the police power of the Constitution, gives the state the power to compel that. And there are cases in the United States that bring forth case that pops into my head, I may have the name wrong, is Jacobson. I think probably I have it right. Check it out. Yeah. For example, if there's a disease that will kill you, you have the right to refuse that, but you have no right to refuse to be vaccinated against a uh, contagious disease. Public health, the police power of the Constitution, gives the state the power to compel that. And there are cases in the United States that bring forth case that pops into my head. I may have the name wrong. Is Jacobson. I think uh, probably I have it right. Interesting. Check it out. Um, you'll see that there are cases after cases after cases. An interesting case. Jacobson. Should we check that out? Mm-hmm. The public health permits reasonable actions to prevent the spread of communicable diseases. Most of them grow out of tuberculosis cases in the early 20th century, but some are more recent than that. But there is still an issue of whether the governor has the authority to create laws, and that's a matter of state legislation. But you've opened up a whole new area here. So right. the governor has the right, or sorry, the government has the right to yeah. force someone to be vaccinated. Absolutely. But how do we know what they're providing us from a medical standpoint is accurate? There are doctors who argue that Anthony Fauci is totally wrong in his assessment. And it certainly seems like week to week, month to month, they don't seem to know anything about this virus. I agree with that. I mean, I think there's a lot. I wrote an article early on pointing out two fundamental errors right away. Um, but uh, that's what a democracy is about. <laughs> and if the majority of the people agree uh... and support that for public health measures, you have to be vaccinated, you have to be vaccinated. They should give you an alternative. The alternative is to live in your home. Oh. Don't get vaccinated, but never, ever leave ah, your home. Ah, that's live in so a bubble. nice. If... Live in a bubble. Bubble boy. So that's the alternative. You can live in a bubble. You can stay in your home forever. You can be in, incarcerated forever in your home. Be a bubble boy. Maybe they let you go out if you, you put a bubble around your body. Isn't this astonishing? I mean, it's the crime of the century, what is happening here, folks. I mean, this is literally the most evil plot in the history of humanity. And here they're telling you, you basically, what Alan Dershowitz is saying, you have no right to resist any of it. You have no right to stand up. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right not to get vaccinated. You have no right not to be quarantined. You have no rights, period. You have no constitutional rights. So he's inverted the Constitution. He completely inverted it from what, and perverted it from what it's supposed to be, which is to protect individuals against the tyranny of the state, and has basically completely twisted that and turned it into the opposite. You know, they love to do that as above, so below, sort of inversion of everything. That's exactly what this uh, scumbag is doing here. Anyways. If you want to interact with other people, you cannot become typhoid merit. The Constitution doesn't give you the right to spread your illness to other people. And uh, you can disagree. You can be a dissenter. You can leave the country. You can go into a bubble. But what you can't do is say, I don't disagree, I don't agree with Fauci, therefore I'm going to take the law into my own hands and decide to spread the disease. That's not a constitutional right. Sorry. But Professor no. Dershowitz, how can you support a law that's made on the determination by a doctor? If you went to the doctor today and he determined that we need to chop off your leg, wouldn't you get a second opinion before you went mm. and did what that doctor said? Interesting way of phrasing that, Mr. Goodman. Let's see what he says. Here. I wouldn't have him. I wouldn't even listen to that doctor. We're not talking about it based on a doctor. We're talking about it based on a legislature. Uh -huh. Based on the exactly. legislature's decision being upheld by the highest courts and by the Supreme Court. We're talking about democracy. Doctor doesn't make the decision. The decision is made by the government through democratic means. And if the decision is made <laughs> by the government. Democra wait, wait a second. Democratic means? What? What? How does it that is has there been a referendum on on vaccines? Did I miss something? Of course, right? They want you. They, see, this guy pretends to be some sort of constitutional expert, right? 
And look at this. He's basically raping the Constitution. He's, he, he claims to be a constitutional expert or a constitutional lawyer or whatever you want to say, right? And here he's basically saying you have no constitutional rights to, to resist any of what they're trying to do, even though you're supposed to be, or you're supposed to be protected by the Constitution. If they told you you have to cut off your leg, that would be unconstitutional because your leg doesn't help them. It help. Let's assume that doctor says to you, unless you cut off your leg, you'll die. You have a right to die. You don't have to cut off your leg. But if the doctor says, unless you cut off your leg, your leg is contagious and will spread your disease to many, many, many other people, that's a completely different issue. Constitution. If, if this legislation is based on the determinations made by doctors and they've determined something about, uh, it's, you know, we're, we're mixing the fields of medicine and law and the proof of something in law seems vastly different than the proof of something in medicine. A lot of the people who are advising us as to the future of vaccinations in this country are the very same people who have been kicked out of major countries for serious failures and injuries resulting from vaccines that they felt were going to be beneficial. I'm very troubled by the legality of what you're suggesting because it seems like we're very close to uh, a government mandate that we must all be vaccinated. I, let me let me I take you in another I direction. Here. I would like I would like to see a government mandate for if if a, if a safe <laughs> vaccine. Is there you go. For, he wants it. Uh, COVID nineteen. I hope it's mandated. Uh huh. And I will defend it and we'll argue that in the Supreme Court of the United see, States. See, and that's again. the whole thing too. Like, as if this guy has any idea what they're putting into the vaccines. Maybe he does, right? Because he's an insider and all that. And it's, you know, whether this guy ever takes the freaking vaccine, probably not, right? It's probably for all of us cattle sort of thing, right? But even though he would have no clue what is being put in these vaccines. This is what I say about anybody that's pro-vaccine. Like, I, I don't understand how anybody can be pro-vaccine unless you know exactly what's in the vaccines. Like, and, and you might have been convinced by watching television or reading books or whatever, New York Times bestsellers and whatever else. But unless you know what's exactly in the vaccine that's being injected, unless you have the wherewithal upstairs, you have the this sort of scientific knowledge, the, the uh, ability to understand exactly what can happen. And of course, even the best scientists in the world, the best chemists and whatever else that would come up with these vaccines... They still have to try them out and, you know, uh, there's a whole lengthy procedure to see if there's any side effects and whatever else. So being pro-vaccine, like, I understand people don't want to get deadly diseases and stuff like that. I understand that. And I understand that vaccines in the past have helped people and stuff like that. But the reality is, unless you know what's exactly in the vaccine, unless you know for sure, why would you be pro-vaccine? You should be skeptical. You should be skeptical about anything that they put in your body. So if the government is forcing this on all of humanity, it's just insane, right? It just doesn't make sense, of course. And what is the death rate, of course, for this uh, supposed COVID-19? Well, it's, it's like it's comparable to the flu. It probably is the flu for all we know. I mean, it's it's so insignificant in, in comparison to the tens of millions, hundreds of millions and potentially billions of people are going to be laid off around the world and how many people will die of depression, alcoholism and suicide and whatnot. It's out of this world. It's absolutely out of this world what is going on. And they're basically telling you, now we know Trump with the warp speed and we're going to use the military to hand out all the vaccines, right? That we're going to we're going to make sure every American, they're making 500 million syringes, 500 million there's only 330 million people in, in the United States, right? 500 million. And they want to have it all ready to go. And then they're going to have the military at your door. And you are not going to be able to resist. Most likely. So they're setting the table for forced vaccinations of every single person on this planet. Well, except the people that are in the club, of course. Like Mr. Alan Dershowitz here. He's in the club, right? So he wants us all to get it. And he's going to say here that he would be first in line. It's just hilarious. Against your views. And you would get it if they came out tomorrow and said there's a vaccine. If it's ready. one online, <laughs> if we felt it was safe. If we obvious, felt it was safe. Judgment, if we decided to become civil disobedience and violate the law, uh, that would be uh, a different thing. But the law would be completely valid.